TV 33, we bring you Indiana basketball. Sports Center 33's live coverage continues with the 1986 Boys ACAC Basketball Championship. Brought to you by Entree Computer Center at Clinton Corners, where we're with you every step of the way. By A.B. Dick Products, the home of the Monolfa Beta 450Z Zoom Copiers at 5430 Distribution Drive. By Kaler Nickel Medical Centers in Bluffton, Fort Wayne in Ossian, Indiana, and Salina, Ohio. Preventive medicine for your good health. By Schenkel's All-Star Dairy. Don't forget to thank Mom for buying Schenkel's. By Scott's Foods. No other store offers you more than the people pleasers at Scott's. By ReadyMed Urgent Care Centers. We're ready when you need us. By Fort Wayne National Bank. Save two ways with an IRA from Fort Wayne National Bank. By O'Reilly's Office Furniture and Supplies, 2525 West Jefferson, and their new location in Georgetown Square. Here are Hilliard Gates and Dick DeFay. We greet you again from the beautiful Memorial Coliseum in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And this is the setting for the ACAC 1986 Boys Championship Basketball Game featuring unbeaten Woodland going against the 1985 champion, Carroll Chargers. Carroll has had a rebuilding season, although they don't use that word around Carroll High School. Coach Kent Lottmuller doesn't say he rebuilds. He just takes what he has left from one year and starts over another year. And he lost seven players from last year's championship team. And they're coming on like gangbusters recently. They're now five and eight. And they've been playing very well in this championship this week here at the Memorial Coliseum. But they're going against a team from Woodland that has won 13 consecutive basketball games. And in some areas, uh, some people think that Woodland should be rated in the top 20 in the state of Indiana. It's a very good basketball team, maybe one of the best ACAC teams in recent memory, and they certainly have one of the greatest basketball players in the state of Indiana, Rob Geistway, who is averaging uh, better than 26 points a game, and he has 350 points for the entire season. You can see uh, Woodland going through a little pregame drill out here at the uh, court to our left here. We've just concluded broadcasting live the girls championship between Norwell and uh, Carroll. It was won by Norwell, finally 47 to 41. A very, very close basketball game. It was a two-point game with less than a minute and a half to go. It was uh, 41 to 39, and uh, Norwell won it at the free throw line, uh, getting uh, a couple of free throws by uh, uh, Lori Henry and uh, one by Angie Bradburn, and uh, particularly a free throw or two by Tracy Pritchard. So there you see the champions, the Norwell Lady Knights, and Coach uh, Neil Kinsey and his staff, student managers, and all those who help. Rex Decker's athletic director at Norwell High School. Norwell has a very good boys basketball team, and uh, they gave Woodland quite a battle here on Thursday night and finally lost it in the waning moments of the game and actually lost it at the foul line. And Jerry Lewis, the coach of Norwell, will join us at halftime here this afternoon to analyze Woodland and uh, Carroll and see if they're playing uh, like they did against him uh, during the regular season and here in the championship this past week. Angie Bradburn getting the WKJG Television Sports Most Valuable Player Award with 20 points in this game this afternoon, and she deserved it. Uh, an excellent young lady and a great young athlete. We understand the University of Georgia women's coach is uh, track coach is here. Uh, probably going to talk to her about possibly coming to the University of Georgia and uh, being on their track team. Here are the teams coming back out. That means we'll have the starting lineup for the second game following these messages. Back live at the Memorial Coliseum for Woodland against Carroll to introduce the entire squads and the starting lineup at the public address system. The announcer is Gene Haney. Welcome to today's championship game. The visitors on the scoreboard this afternoon will be the Carroll Chargers. <laughs> Members of the team are as follows. Number 10, he's six foot, a sophomore, Scott Pathman. Number 12, five foot, 10 inches, a sophomore, Brad Walleen. Number 14, five foot nine, he's a junior, 
Todd Stallhut. Number 24, five foot eight, a sophomore, Rod Myers. Number 40, six foot two, a senior, Jamie Gonzagowski. Number 42, six foot two, a sophomore, Gail Mosier. Number 44, six foot two, a junior, Todd Schenbeckler. And now the starters. At one forward, wearing number 22, six foot one, a sophomore, Steve Merriman. At the other forward, wearing number 30, six foot one, a junior, Kevin Shank. At center, number 34, six foot four, a senior, Todd Dunn. At one guard, number 20, five foot 10, a junior, Steve Koblenz. At the other guard, number 32, six foot tall, a senior, Steve Malcolm. The Chargers are coached by Mr. Kent Lockmuller, assisted by Mr. Dean Merriman, Mr. Roger Farrell. And now for the home team, Woodland Warriors. Number 10, six foot, one half inch, he's a senior, Doug McNally. Number 14, 5'11 and one half, a sophomore, Jeff Bratmiller. Number 20, 5'10 and a half, a sophomore, Troy Smith. Number 22, 6'5, a senior, Kevin Weber. Number 34, six foot two, sophomore, Blake Kepner. Number 40, six foot one, a junior, Stan Gehrig. Number 42, six, one and a half, a junior, Rod Horman. And now the starters. At one forward, number 30, six foot two, a senior, Greg Stieglitz. At the other forward, number 32, six foot five, a senior, Steve Weber. At center, Number 44, six foot nine. He's a junior, Scott Wilder. At one guard, number 12, he's five, ten and a half, junior, Ray Mendenhall. At the other guard, number 24, six foot six inches, a senior, Rob Geistwhite. The Warriors are coached by Mr. Gay Martin, assisted by Mr. Bill Mall and Denny Coomer. And the officials for today's game are Dick Modricker and Larry Jones. That's Jones on the right and Dick Modricker on the left. They'll be calling this game and we're ready to go. The boys championship live at the Memorial Coliseum. Five and eight, Carroll. 13 and 0, Woodland, led by Rob Geist averaging almost 30 points a game, officially 26.9, 350 points this season, has scored 1,049 in his career. He's a senior, he's tall, he's 6'6", he's strong, and 
hits free throws at 79%, 55% field goals, and uh, Woodland in dark. Well, the both teams are in blue, and uh, I'm not sure it's going to show too well on television. Anyway, the light blue is Woodland, and the dark blue is uh, Carroll. I don't know what it is in black, and black, and it's going to be a little odd. Woodland, the home team. Geis White gets the tip. He has the basketball. Quickly over to Stiglitz. He scores. Greg Stiglitz scores, and Woodland leads right off the tip, two to nothing. Here is uh, Woodland in a pressing defense. Going to keep Carroll from bringing the ball down easily. This is Kevin Shank, who got Carroll back into the ball game against uh, Cherubusco the other night. He was ill, didn't come in uh, until late in the first quarter, and played just beautifully. This is Malcolm with the ball. Steve Berriman. Berriman is the lad who had the three-point play at the end of the game that really won it for Carroll against Chirabusco. Todd Dunn moving the ball around now against the man-to-man -man defense. Carroll taking its time. Not trying to play a power game against the Woodland. They'll kill you with a power game. Gotta be a little cute and cutting. Going inside. Beautiful layup by Kevin Shank. Ties the game at two. Patience. And uh, hitting the shot. Two to two score. Ray Hall. Rob Geiswhite. This is Steve Weber. Inside the Geiswhite. The traveling is the call. Turnover gives the ball back to the Carroll Charger. And it's been a long time, Dixon. That I've seen two teams in uniforms that are, that are relatively dark. I'm sure the Woodlands uniforms are their home suits, but they're not very white. <laughs> Looks like they may have faded in the wash. <laughs> Carroll moving around uh, the defense. They've gone zone now. They were man to man. They flashed man to man at the start of the game, and now they're in a zone. Across the zone to Steve Barrowman. Barrowman's father and assistant coach on the bench of uh, Carroll. Todd Dunn. Very patient offense by Carroll. We expected this. They're just not able to play the power game against the team. Uh, they can move up and down the floor like Woodland, and they have a lot of guns. Foul has been charged for 32, and that's Steve Weber. Foul on Steve Weber. Steve Weber uh, trying to sneak in there and steal the ball. Made body contact, and they call it foul. We already got an early timeout, Hilliard. We have, with 5.53 to go in the first quarter. The score is tied at two, and we'll be back to call us in with more following these messages. Two to two score, possession of Carroll. Goes inbounds to Kevin Shay. Now they're putting a press on the man with the ball. A trapping type of zone defense. Ray Mendenhall on the interception. Scott Wilder, the center of uh, Woodland, is 6'9. There is Geiswhite trying to go through, and he's cut off and fouled. So Rob Geiswhite is fouled and charged it to 32, and that's uh, Steve Malcolm. Here's Geis White, trying to drive towards the free throw circle. There's the ball right there for number 32. Before, uh, by Steve Malcolm, just before Geis White got to the bottom of the charity strike. Ray Benderhall, Wilder's shot is blocked by Todd Dunn. Good play. Geis White comes off with the ball for Woodland, however. Here's his shot. He got it. Let's see if the basket counts. He made the shot. I don't know whether the foul came before or after the shot. The basket is not good. Great play here by Rob Geis White. Goes up for the shot. He was bumped before he got the shot away, they say. Great body control by this young man. Foul number two on Malcolm. So the Warriors retain possession, inbounded by Steve Weber. Continued to be controlled by the Woodland Warriors. Weber, Geis White playing the pivot. He's in traffic, goes up and scores anyway. Rob Geiswhite gets his first basket, certainly not his last of this game. It's 4-2 to two in favor of Woodland with 5-12 to go in period number one. There's that trapping defense again by uh, Woodland, showing their quickness. Got his pass to Steve Goplins. He played so well last Thursday night, and his aggressiveness uh, and shooting ability got uh, Carroll back into the ball game. Merriman, a sophomore. Dean Merriman 
His father, assistant coach at Carroll, was a great star in county competition for several years. Cross the zone defense to Todd Dunn, breaks it, throws underneath. Hoblenz turning, shooting, missing. Rebound hit in the air. Controlled by Dunn, shot and missed, but a foul. This will be charged to Ray Mendenhall. Ray Mendenhall, just under six feet tall, trying to stop uh, Todd Dunn, six foot four. Here's the first shot. There's Dunn with the ball. There it's Mendenhall reaching in there and batting the uh, right wrist of uh, Todd Dunn. So Dunn will go to the charity strike with a couple of shots. Dunn uh, shooting a pair. He is a 55% foul shooter. Has 13 tournament points this week. Shoots the left-hander and misses it. He's tall at 6'4", a senior. Has scored 112 points this year. Four to two, Woodland. Free throw in and out. Pulled down by Steve Weber. Woodland in possession. Rob Geist White, very smooth, very classy. Greg Stiglitz. He kind of set up the big man, that's Scott Wilder, 6'9 in the middle. He's improved miraculously in the last month or so. Nice fake, Stiglitz jumps, shoots, banks it up, misses the shot. Rebound, controlled by number 22, Steve Merriman. Carroll in possession. With a basketball, Kevin Shank. Shank has one field goal. He has the only field goal by Harold in the game. Here he is, aggressively shooting and missing. Rebound on the court, controlled by Woodland. Steve Weber with the ball to Ray Mendenhall. Famous name in high school basketball in the state of Indiana. Mendenhall, here's his shot. He scores. Here's Keith Mendenhall. So to six to two, Woodland. 3.44 to go in the period, and Mendenhall will pick up his second foul, and that's kind of a silly foul. Foul done. 3.42 to go in the first period. That's the third team foul. Norwell has won the girls' championship today in a game we televised earlier, 47 to 41 over Carroll. Kevin Shank, Steve Malcolm, Kevin Shank, Steve Merriman, Steve Koblenz. Now back outside to Kevin Shank. Playing for the percentage shot, not trying to move up and down the floor in a hurry. Control the ball, eat time off the clock, collapse the length of the game. 3-12 to go in the first period. Six to two, Woodland. Kevin Shank, ball is knocked away. Charge the foul to Rob Geistwhite, his first. Geistwhite. Are they calling? Saying Geistwhite kicked the ball on okay. this one here, I think. Thank you. Kevin Weber has been replaced in the Woodland lineup. And twin brother Kevin Weber, twin brother Steve Weber in the lineup. Geistwhite got the ball. But down on the court, as you saw, got the pass off to Greg Stiglitz. This is Wilder off the baseline, scored. This lad is really improved, and uh, he has had an excellent week, scoring 36 points at the tournament, going for those two. And time has been called again by Carroll. Wilder's averaging 11 points a game, but he had 36 in two games in this tournament. So Dick, uh, he's coming into his own, and you're only a junior, and I have a feeling he will be one of the outstanding players in Northeastern Indiana next year. He will. He's a strong young man. Big. I mean, six foot nine. I don't know what his weight is, but it's got to be over two, uh, what, 30, 240? Certainly uh, at, at the 225, 230 area. You know, they used to give the weights to the high school players and the college players, but uh, that has become uh, incidental, apparently, and it doesn't appear on any of the rosters. Score is eight to two, and it became eight to two on this shot by Scott Weiler. Big man, watch how well he gets up for a big man. He goes way up in the air, puts good arch on that shot. And you don't block those kind of shots, unless you're seven foot two. His field goal percentage is 57, but of course that means he's getting a lot inside, and that was about an eight or nine footer. And his free throw percentage is uh, excellent at 67. He's the kind of a man I want on my team. <laughs> or just to walk down the street at night. Yeah. <laughs> Eight to two, Woodland. 2.35 to go in the first quarter. We have the 
Weber twins in the lineup now for Woodland, 32 and 22. Steve Koblenz thought better of that shot from the corner. They're putting him in the vice over there. Gets the pass off inside, back to Koblenz. Steve is a good outside shooter, but he's not being given much of an opportunity by Greg Stiglitz. Shot is missed by Steve Malcolm, rebounded by Woodland. Here is Rod Geisweit coming down, gliding down, jump shooting, scoring from the side, Kevin Weber. So it is 10 to 2. Woodland drawing out to an eight point lead early in this contest. Kevin Shank, good ball handler. One of the better players in Northern Indiana. Dunn going to Koblenz. They can't get that shot that he likes. This is Kevin Shank driving, going and banking it in. Kevin Shank. It's 10 to 4. Geisweig. Only taken one shot. He had one that he made that was taken away for a foul before the shot. He has the ball off the lane, gets in traffic, jumps and scores again. So he's two for two here. Twelve to four. Woodland in the lead. Todd Dunn. That again, getting the ball back, going baseline. Koblenz got away and he scores. Watch this lad, he is uh, rather small, but he is dynamite and really is aggressive and plays well. He's fun to watch. So it's 12 to six. Into Scott Wilder, baseline again, he overshot that one. Pulled off by Steve Merriman. We're in the last 38 seconds of the first quarter. And it's 12 to six, Woodland. Half a minute. Steve Malcolm, Steve Merriman. Merriman is double teamed. Passes to Koblenz, had a quick opening. Bounce passes to Todd Dunn, who banks it in. Todd Dunn scores. Oh, it's 12 to 8 as uh, Carroll comes back into the thick. Rob Geistwhite. Kevin Weber misses. Rebound is uh, to Koblenz. Koblenz on the attack. One second ball in the air is not good. At the end of the first quarter, Woodland 12 and the Carroll Chargers 8. We'll be back with the scoring and more play-by-play -play live in a moment. Four-point lead for Woodland. Carroll has the basketball starting the second eight-minute bracket. We'll be covering high school basketball, both uh, girls and boys through the state finals again this year. Hope you'll join us if you can't be here live. Nice fake, beautiful play by Merriman, but he missed the shot. Koblenz got the rebound for Carroll. Ball is knocked away. Picked up by Steve Malcolm to Steve Merriman. Into Koblenz. Koblenz on the corner. Steve Koblenz half court. Deflected, knocked out of bounds by Kevin Weber. If you hear the name Steve frequently, we have three in the starting lineup for Carroll. Steve Koblenz. Kevin Shank. Kevin looking for an opening in that zone to pierce it. Merriman to Dunn. He banks it in. Todd Dunn. So it is now 12 to 10. The delay style of offense for Carroll is paying dividends right now. They've come back into the game as Benderhall shot is not good. And it goes out of bounds. So Carroll gets possession and has a chance in this possession to tie the game at 7.05 of the second quarter. Kevin Shank driving, falling to the court, but he may have been pushed and he was. Guards the foul to 32, Steve Weber. If you think you're seeing double, you are. Steve Shank saw a little daylight, started to go through, and then Steve Weber reached in and uh, sort of tripped him up. He actually hit him around the arm but he lost control of his feet. <laughs> That's the fourth team foul. Steve Weber is 32, and uh, Kevin Weber are 22, and uh, they are twins. They change shirts at halftime. Nobody will know that it. Steve Koblenz for Carroll. Go 
Goyle going in with Steve Malcolm, but he missed the shot. This is Ray Mendenhall on the drive, going hard, going to the basket, dumps the ball off. It's effectively intercepted by Steve Koblenz of Carroll. Excellent play by Koblenz. Not only did he break up the fast break, but he came up with a basketball. Woodland back in the man-to-man -man defense. Kevin Shank driving to the lane. Passes out to Dunn, goes baseline left. Koblenz working the left side of the floor. Todd Dunn over the defense. Steve Merriman into Kevin Shank. Kevin fighting a virus during the week, but he seems to be fine here today. Steve Koblenz, 5.40 to go, first half. This is uh, Kevin Shank, and on the pass, three seconds on the lane. The turnover gives the ball back to Woodland. They lead it by two. One thing uh, Carroll is doing is keeping the ball away from Rob Geistwhite. He hasn't handled the ball too much in this game. He's averaging 26.9 points a game for the whole season, better than that of this tournament. He has uh, 62 points in this tournament this week. Stiglitz, short. Rebound, Todd Dunn. Todd uh, gets the job done for his size. He's the tallest of the Carroll Chargers. And now they're going to get Scott Wilder back in the lineup in a moment for Woodland. They can use his size out there. Kevin Shank. Koblenz angle. Missed the shot. Rebound. Greg Stiglitz of Woodland. To Rob Geistwhite. Geistwhite has four points. He's two for two. He shoots a long one. He misses short. Rebound to Koblenz. He fell down. Throws the ball off. It's taken by his teammate, Kevin Shank. Kevin coming down. Gets into the attacking zone and slows it down a bit. To Steve Malcolm. Now they're going to set it up. The Carroll fans are cheering. There are more Woodland fans than Carroll fans, although Carroll had two teams in this championship today. Steve Merriman against the man-to-man -man defense. Steve Koblenz, who's guarded by Kevin Weber. This is Kevin Shank losing the ball, diving forward is Geist White, and the whistle stops playing. Foul has been called. They called on Kevin Shank, I do believe. It is on Shank. Here's how it happened. Both boys going for the ball, but then uh, Shank was in there to push. Rob, uh, was it Geist White? Yeah, it was, it was Rob underneath. So the ball goes out of bounds here to the Woodland Warriors. Merritt has been replaced by Todd Schindbeckler for Carroll. Schindbeckler is number 44. So we have two Todds and three Steves in the lineup. <laughs> goes inside now to Scott Wilder. Wilder passing uh, to Weber. Weber just misses. Rebound is by Mendenhall. <laughs> 14 to 10, Woodland. Woodland has rolled up some gigantic scores this year. They had 86 against Southern Wells in this tournament and 70 against Norwell, winning at 70 to 65. But a very tough ball game. Kevin Shank missing, but a foul is on Rod, uh, Greg Stiglitz. Shank starts his drive down the free throw line, moving in his way is Shank, or is a Stiglitz. Stiglitz actually uh, does what you're supposed to do, put your hands right straight up in the air. The officials are not supposed to call a foul on you when you do that. Something well, went awry. Well, you gotta, you gotta keep your feet still. And he didn't keep his feet still. <laughs> Here is a Kevin Shank. He's a 58% free throw shooter. He has 23 tournament points going into this game and four this afternoon. This will be 32. Steve Weber coming right back in for twin brother Kevin. 14 to 10, Woodland. Second period, 328 to go. Kevin misses two, and he doesn't do that very often. Rob Geistwhite attacking now for the Woodland Warriors. 
Dumps it off to Ray Mendenhall. Ray into the foul lane, hands it to Wilder. He lays it up and in. Nice play created by Mendenhall's penetration of the defense and then passing the ball off to Scott Wilder. And the 6'9 lad just laid it in. It's 16 to 10 again. Time has been called and it's taken by Kerr. We'll be back at the Memorial Coliseum where it's 16 to 10 Woodland following these messages. Well, Carroll got to the championship by beating Heritage 52 to 46 and Chiribusco 46 to 44 with a rally in the late stages of the game. The Chargers inbound the ball. Goes in to Kevin Chang. This is Steve Koblenz. Steve playing. They're playing 3-2 now. That's going to try to draw somebody out a little bit further toward the middle of the floor. Open up the area around the basket. Notice how Carroll has changed, and that's, I'm sure, what they talked about in that timeout a moment ago. Koblenz is going into the corner. The ball is knocked out of bounds. It'll be retained by Carroll, inbounded by Kevin Shane. Under two minutes and 40 seconds now, the second quarter. Todd Dunn. Now they're flashing a man into the pivot. That's Todd Schinbeckler. So Woodley comes out and puts a little pressure on the ball. Schinbeckler in the corner. Lob pass. Now to Todd Dunn on the left side. Over the defense. Almost uh, two minutes now. 205, 204. Second quarter. Layup is missed by Steve Malcolm. He had an open shot, but he was expecting to get it blocked, I think, and this didn't extend his arm, and it's 16-10 uh, to 10 as Woodland comes down again. Goes inside to Stiglitz. He overshot it. Rebound Wilder. He missed it. Rebound Geist Wade. He missed it. Next rebound is to Kevin Trank of Carroll. <laughs> Geist Wade diving for the ball, and he knocked it out of bounds. It'll be Carroll's ball at midcourt. It is a 16 to 10 lead for Woodland. Woodland has won the championship six previous times. The last one in 1984. Carroll won it in 1977 and 1985. Defeating Cherubusco last year, 83 to 60. Schindbecker into the pivot. The ball is deflected, but a foul is on Scott Wilder, his first. That's the 16 foul, so it'll be a shooting violation. Scott Wilder trying to move in there to break up the play, and he puts a leg out in front of Todd Dunn, and the uh, foul is called on Wilder. Todd Dunn has missed Steve two Merriman. previous free throws. Steve Merriman, 22, re-entering the Carroll lineup, and Todd Schinbecker comes out. Here's Todd Dunn, a senior, number 34. Left-hander. In and out. Rebound, Merriman, he goes up, scores. He's fouled by Scott Wilder. So Wilder has made two consecutive personal fouls as Steve Merriman has a possible three-point play for Carroll. Nice play by Steve Merriman. Gets the rebound, there goes Wilder, and he bumps Merriman, but Merriman keeps that body control and banks the ball off the board, gets two points, got a chance to make this a three-point play now if he can convert this free throw. He's had a good week, and uh, it was his play that really won the game uh, for Carroll on Thursday night. This is the free throw, however. Travel for the ball, it's loose, still loose, and there'll be a foul. And this may be called on Ray Mendenhall, which would, if true, be his third. It is number three on Ray, and let's look at it. Ray Mendenhall, number 12, dives now for that loose ball, although that foul could have gone any uh, of four ways. Ray has been replaced by number 40, and that's uh, Stan Gary. So Merriman, a 59% free thrower, is back on the line. He misses another one. He gets in a row, he gets a rebound, misses again. And Steve Koblenz gets the ball, but it's knocked out of his hands by Rob Geist-White of Woodland. 
but the Chargers still have possession, trading by four in a very low-scoring affair. 104 to go in the second quarter. Todd Dunn, Steve Koblenz, Kevin Shank, they're double-teaming him. Steve Malcolm, Todd Dunn to Malcolm, intercepted and then uh, it was kicked. It'll be out of bounds to Carroll, still in their possession in the late moments of the second quarter. Shooting from the corner, not good. Uh, Kevin Shank, Woodland gets the ball back and Rob Geistwhite attacking, goes in the lane, jumps it, shoots it short. Not a very good shot for Rob. That's the first one he's forced all week. And a foul has been called on Steve Malcolm and that's number three on Steve. Here's the uh, slow motion on this. Malcolm's right back to Geis. Well, he goes up for it. He's knocked to the floor, actually, by Malcolm. And then Malcolm tries to plead his case to the referee, saying, ha. Huh? Rod Myers will go in immediately for Steve Malcolm, who picked up his third foul. As Kent Lockfielder does want to get his fourth before halftime, as you see Kent talking to Steve. Ball comes in to Greg Stieglitz. And the Wilder Scott goes up. He is fouled. This looks to be on Kevin Shine. Fouls on the Todd Dunn. Number 34 goes right up with Wilder, but uh, apparently touched his body a wee bit there. The official says that's on you, Dunn. It is on Todd Dunn, and the free thrower is Scott Wilder. He's a 67% free throw shooter. That's his fifth point. Take a good look at this 6'9 lad, only a junior. Marvelous potential. <laughs> 17, 18 to 12, with 34 seconds to go. Todd Dunn. Koblenz hooks it. A hook. It's good. Koblenz gets his second field goal, and it's 18 to 14, 18 seconds to go. Rob Geistwhite. Stiglitz. Greg's angle shot, banks it in. Greg Stiglitz scores at the buzzer, and that's the end of the first half with a score, Woodland 20. And uh, the Carroll Chargers 14 will be back with halftime guest scoring and some interesting thoughts and comments in a few moments, but now these messages. Here's Greg Stiglitz scoring that shot just before the buzzer. Leads forward, banks it off the glass. He's got the two points, and it's a 20 to 14 ball game here at halftime with Woodland leading. All right, now let's go back out on the floor. Here's Hilliard Gates. Thank you very much, Dick. We're back on the basketball court. The scoring quickly. Woodland has uh, Greg Stiglitz with four. Steve Weber did not score. Scott Wilder with six. Ray Mendenhall, four. Rob Geistwhite has four. And Kevin Weber has two. For Carroll, a total of 14 is Steve Merriman, two. Kevin Shank has four. Todd Dunn, four. And Steve Koblenz has four points in this game. It was eight, 12 to 8 in favor of Woodland at the quarter, 20 to 14, Woodland at halftime. Here's Jerry Lewis, the fine coach of the Norwell Knights, uh, whose career now expands more than 300 victories, and I congratulate you for that. And you had quite a ball game here the other night against Woodland. We really did, Hilliard. I think our, our players performed very well. We were very happy with uh, the things they did on the rebounds, which I think is a key in that game with Woodland. Jerry Carroll is uh, playing a deliberate style basketball game here against Woodland. Did you think of doing that? Well, not really. We felt that, that we had enough uh, inside play to be able to rebound and, and stay with them, and we felt uh, comfortable playing the ball game up and down the court whenever possible. Well, you had the kind of a team that can play a power game against Woodland. Well, I think so. We have a couple players, uh, young players, but uh, they were able to go inside some and do a good job on the board. So we felt with our uh, quick guards and uh, inside play we could do that. Your girls team played well today. They really did. They have a fine group of seniors leading that team. And uh, Angie, that uh, won the award, Angie Bradburn, is a fine uh, student athlete. Jerry, uh, you have an outstanding sophomore. Tell the fans uh, about it. 
Well, Darren Archibald has uh, started every ball game in the two years he's been in high school at Norwell. And uh, he's played in the guard position, even though he's 6'4". He uh, handles the ball well, is a very unselfish player, uh, does a good job on the boards, and when we want to post him up, he's, uh, he can do that well, too. So we feel he's just a, an all-around fine basketball player. He's got two more years. Well, we're glad of that. He is physically gifted. He has a huge pair of hands, probably the biggest hands for a, a lad of that age and size that I've ever seen. He really does, and this, uh, this helps him in many ways on the rebounds and snaring the rebound when he's off balance or catching passes and, uh, and in his shooting, too. Woodland has a couple of uh, outstanding players in Rob Geistwhite and Scott Wilder. Maybe more than a couple of outstanding players, Hilliard. They have one of the biggest and uh, best uh, county teams and area teams we've had for a while. They're very good. What about Jerry Lewis next year? Well, I think we're going to have a good team. We have a couple of three sophomores that are getting a lot of action and doing well, and, and we have uh, some more. I think the key to our success the next couple years will be how three or four more uh, sophomores uh, develop in our uh, reserve program this year and how they come out next year. Well, I know that you covered that 300th victory and I congratulate you on it. We've been friends for a great number of years and I'm very, very proud of what you've done. Uh, uh, thanks a lot, Hilliard, and we certainly appreciate your support of our conference attorney. It makes it go. Thank but you. Thank you very much. Jerry Lewis, the coach of the Norwell Knights. We'll be back with the ACAC Wrestling Champions for 1986 in just a moment. TV 33, your exclusive Super Bowl station. Barry Humble is the wrestling coach at Adams Central High School. He perennially wins the ACAC Wrestling Championship. He did it at Leo, uh, at Harding or Leo? Where was that? Leo. At Leo over the weekend. And he has joined us here this afternoon live to present his championship team. Barry, how many years have you won this in a row? We've won it eight years in a row. And uh, I think 10 overall? 10 overall. It's been pretty exciting. You do something unusual with your wrestling. What is that? Well, we get a, try to get a family atmosphere. A lot of my former wrestlers have been, come back to the meets and uh, encourage the kids. And I guess nobody wants to be on the team that doesn't win it. So the excitement is in the family, the fans, everybody gets behind it. Well, you've been coming down here every halftime uh, for years and years to pay tribute to your fine athletes. Why don't you introduce them here? Take the mic and tell Thanks us who they much. are, okay? First, we have our 98-pounder, a freshman, Joe Hurst, who is the champion. Then next, we have Shane Reynolds, is a two-time champion. Shane's a junior. Then we have Troy Rose, a four-time champion, and this is only the second four-time champion in history of uh, at, uh, wrestling. So Troy was a state champion last year at 105 pounds. At 119 pounds, we have another freshman, Jim Marball, and he won the championship for us this year for the first time. And we have a senior, Greg Snyder. Greg has won uh, two ACAC championships and is a state finals last year at 138. Then Jeff McCullough, 155-pound champion, and uh, this was Jeff's first uh, conference championship. And finally, our 177-pound champion is also undefeated, Doug Schultz, and uh, Doug's won uh, two championships. Congratulations to you, Barry. I'm not even going to take on the littlest one here. I think it killed me. Well, thank you. We have uh, we have about 34 boys on our team, and uh, they're all pretty excited about what's happening. Well, congratulations. They deserve to be excited. Well, thank you very much for letting us be here today. Good luck to you at Adams Central. Well, we'll be back with the second half in this basketball game with the Woodland leading Carroll by a small margin here. It should be an interesting second half. Hope you'll stay with us. And now, these messages. Back at the Memorial Coliseum, it is 22. As they uh, lead uh, the Carroll Chargers, as we're ready to start the second half. First game this morning was won by the Norwell Lady Knights, the championship going to Norwell, 47 to 41, over Carroll in a very close basketball game and an interesting one. Dick, you have the scoring? Yes, very quickly, the Woodland Warriors, Stiglitz has four points, Scott Weiler has six, Ray Mendenhall has four, and Rob Geistwhite has four. Kevin Weber comes in with two points. Very quickly for Carroll, Steve uh, Merriman with two, Kevin Shank with four, Todd Dunn has four, as does Steve Koblenz, and that takes care of the scaring, scoring for Carroll. That's a little hard to say. Both teams back to their respective benches. Uh, 1929, New Haven defeated Huntertown in the lowest scoring game in the ACAC history, 16 to nine. So uh, that score is not in danger now. <laughs> but it was close here for a while. 20 to 14 at halftime. Wooden leading by six. 
Well, Guy Schweit has been held to four points. I'm sure that's his lowest first half total, maybe of his career. Quite possible. But I don't think he's too concerned about that. He wants to win this ball game, and he's not right. going to go out there and force a shot or two. Woodland inbounding the ball to start the second half. Goes inside, is hit by Kevin Shank. Shank coming down on Mendenhall, goes in, lays up and scores, and Mendenhall with three fouls has let him go in. So it is now 20 to 16. Rob Geisweit for Woodland, stopping, jumping, banks it up and in. He's only missed, I think, one shot, and it's 22 to 16. Six-point lead for Woodland. Kevin Shank over the defense to Steve Koblenz. Todd Dunn. Merriman. Malcolm. Back to Steve Merriman. Kevin Shank setting up the offense. They flash somebody across the foul lane occasionally. There's Koblenz in, and he comes back out, but he double dribbled, obviously. So the turnover gives the ball to uh, Woodland, leading by six. Their biggest lead has been eight at 10 to two. We'll have college basketball, Louisville and Kansas following this game, and then at three o'clock this afternoon, a great game, number one, North Carolina against one of the great college teams of the nation, Georgia Tech. Steve Malcolm coming down, knocked out of bounds. Knocked out by Steve Weber. Merriman, Kevin Shank, but Wilder is there. He's going to cut him off. Woodland trying to force the offense by putting pressure underneath the Dunn. Nice play, beautiful play. Todd Dunn. Very patient, 22 to 18, 6.06 to go in the third. Rob Geistweit. He scores again. He has eight points. Here's one of the really great shooters, Dick. Certainly is. He impresses me. I thought he was going to pass that ball, but he just went up and decided to shoot. There's Carroll coming down. Steve Koblenz cut off by Scott Wilder. He couldn't get that 6-9 frame out of the way. Now they work it out to Kevin Shank, who punches into the defense. Ball is stolen by Rob Geistweit. He gets the ball back, comes down, drifts down, always looking ahead. Here's the pass to Weber. He turns way short. Todd Dunn caught the ball. Weber's left-hander just failed to get up there. Steve Koblenz, Steve Malcolm, Merriman, Malcolm again, 24 to 18, a six point lead, Wilden leading it, Carroll with the basketball, turn right shot by Shank, he was all alone there, they let him step in there and he turned and scored it with the left hand, so it's 24 to 20, 447 to go in the third quarter. Ray Mendenhall goes inside to Geist White. It's blocked, but a foul will be charged to Todd Dunn in second. Now watch this. Uh, what? Here's the replay. Nice move by Geist White, drawing the foul from Todd Dunn. Todd went right up with him, matched him uh, height for height. Ray Mendenhall talking to his team's bench and coach uh, Gay Martin there. Dice White, 79% at the foul line. He has nine of his team's 25 points. He has a little ceremonial he does on every free throw, and when we can start out with him live at the beginning, we'll show it to you. It's always the same. He has his back to the basket. He's off the foul circle, does a little ceremonial, uh, wiping his shoes. Blowing on his hands. Here's Kevin Chang. Oh, nice ball handling. Koblenz scores. Beautiful ball handling by Carroll. 
26 to 22. Still a four-point lead for Woodland. And down as Geist White started through a charging foul, a violation on Geist White. It was an accidental thing, but uh, Koblenz just stood right there. Okay, here's how it all happened. Ooh, Geist White <laughs> goes right into Koblenz. Koblenz was just standing there, nonchalantly watching the ball game. Geist White didn't see Mr. Koblenz. Okay, time out of the floor. That means time in for this message. And we're back live at the Memorial Coliseum. It is a 26-22 game in favor of Woodland, a high-scoring unit. And averaging well over 64 points a game. Here's Carroll. Kevin Shank. Dice bites on him. But they're playing a zone. Four minutes. Carroll getting something set up here. They're very patient. They're trying to keep the defense spread, as you see. Malcolm across the defense, Dunn. Malcolm is in the corner all alone on the right side, but they go to the opposite side. Now in, now to the baseline, to Copeland's back outside to Malcolm. His shot is blocked by Geisweig, picked up by Steve Weber. Weber coming down, so is Dunn. Weber goes in, misses the shot. Rebound pulled down uh, by Steve Merriman. for Carroll. Woodland's trying to legislate the offense here and try to make uh, Carroll play more quickly than they want to play. Back outside to Steve uh, Koblenz. It is to Malcolm, to Kevin Shank. Kevin is very, very quick across the defense. This is Kevin Shank. Like lightning, he has unusual quickness. Rob Geistwhite, incidentally, is the 54th, 51st player in this area to score more than a thousand career points. This is Chang. There's his quickness. There's his shot, and it, it bounding not good. Rebound to Rob Geistwhite. Geistwhite coming down for the Warriors. Drifts to the baseline. They double team him. And there's a collision offensive foul on Geist White. Now Geist White is going to protest this call because he was surrounded. He did not step back or go forward. He just went up with his shot. And he did not move into a man or away from him. He went up straight and Gay Martin said, hey, wait a minute, ref, let's talk this over. Gay won't get much uh, consolation from the official, however. But that's what he was complaining about also. 26 to 22 the score and Carroll will come out of this timeout in possession of the basketball on the offensive foul. His second charge to Rob Geistwhite. Geistwhite now has 10 points and he leads all scores but Kevin Shank has eight for Carroll. Eight of his team's 22. Humble is an interesting man, the wrestling coach at Adams Central High School. And looking at those young people, I can see how they win eight in a row. They're very enthusiastic. This is a the man they look to, I guess. Very humble. He's done a tremendous job with the wrestlers down there. He was telling me they start the sectionals next Saturday. This is a team that could go quite a ways. And I'm sure they expect to get down to state with a lot of wrestlers. There's Carroll attacking. Steve Koblenz with the ball. He's quick, not quite as quick as Kevin Shank and not as big. But he may be a little better outside shooter. Koblenz, less than two minutes now.
Shank would have broken down the baseline if it had been open, but it wasn't. Wilder was there, and that cut him off. Robles. Passes off to Todd Dunn. He goes in traffic, shoots and misses. Offensive foul on Dunn. No question about that. His third of the game. Here's Todd Dunn going down the baseline. Watch him go charging right into number 30, Stiglitz. 22 is entering the lineup. Kevin Weber for Woodland. I say Stiglitz got a lesson on how to do a somersault. Kent Lockmuller in his brain trust. Kent uh, with a flower in his lapel and the red tie. Geist White. Geist White passing off to Stiglitz, and let's see what they call. I think there's a foul before the shot. They're going to call this foul on Malcolm. You watch this one. You call it, huh? There's the foul. They say Malcolm was moving. So was Stiglitz. No basket. It remains 26-22. We have four fouls on Malcolm. Inside to Wilder. He scores. Basket counts. He's foul. Good playoff. A pivot on the baseline by Scott Wilder as they set him up and fed the big man. Wilder with the ball. There is a uh, contact right there by Kevin Shank. He went up with Wilder, but Wilder at uh, six foot nine is a hard man to stop when you're at six foot one trying to stop him. Makes it 28 to 22, matching the 16 to 10 lead they had in the second period. The biggest lead overall, though, was 10 to 2, 8 points. Three point play for Scott Wilder. 29 to 22. A minute to go in the third quarter. Time has been called. Charge it to the Carroll Chargers. This is the 63rd IHS AA Basketball Championship. Woodland has won it six previous times. The first time in 1965. Then again in 1968, 69, 1970, 1983, and 1984, the latter two by the current coach, uh, Gay Martin. The Carroll Chargers have won two ACAC basketball championships, 1977 and last year when Kent Lockmuller took his team to the championship, defeating Cherubusco in the game that we televised here a year ago, 83 to 60. Lockmiller went on to have a pretty good year the rest of the way, too, didn't he, with Carroll? He did. We're ready to resume play now in the final 56 seconds of the third quarter. It is 29 to 22. Bill Nichols, our director, wants to show the ceremonial of uh, Rob Geistwhite at the free throw line, and we've been trying to do that for two minutes, but we'll get to it yet, Bill, I promise. It even, is Carroll with the basketball. Even if I have to go out and foul Geist White. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Intercepted pass. Here's Rob coming down. He jump passes underneath, deflected out of bounds by Carroll. Woodland's ball, offensive end of the court. Knocked out of bounds again by Steve Koblenz. 45 second mark third quarter. It's a 29 to 22 lead. Again out of bounds. Woodland on top. Offensive end of the court. Dice White down the baseline. Fakes it, jumps it, shoots it, misses it. Rebound is shot and missed by Weber. Rebounded by Todd Dunn with 34 seconds to go. Now Carroll will wind it down, perhaps for the last shot. Certainly take some time off the clock here. Looking for Kevin Shank here. Here he is out, midcourt. Malcolm, Koblenz for the corner. Yes! Three seconds, two seconds, one second, and that's the end of the third quarter. The score is Woodland 29 and Carroll 24. 
We'll have the final eight minutes of the championship in the ACAC Boys Basketball Tournament for 1986 in a moment. Steve Kobletz here makes the shot from the corner, makes the score 29 to 24, and we're ready to go back to live action. Five-point lead for Woodland, Carroll basketball. Goes into Kevin Shank, don't go the wrong way. <laughs> Steve Malcolm with the basketball. Kobletz. That has a lot of confidence in his ability, and I don't blame him. He's a good outside shooter. He's quick, does a lot of things well. Here's Koblenz. Back to Malcolm. Todd Dunn, Steve Malcolm. Zone defense by Woodland, and they're not really legislating the offense right now. Taking some time off the clock here. Going inside. This is Merriman. He goes up, misses, foul. It'll be Wilder, number three on, the, on Scott Wilder. And it'll be Steve Merriman at the line. Scott Wilder almost in disbelief of this foul. There he is. He's just standing there. Merriman goes up, and I don't think there's any contact. It was a, a light body bump. He just looked awesome. <laughs> two shots. Steve uh, missed two earlier today. And this is this one. Did not get a roll. It just rolled around the edge of the hoop and fell off the left side. And there is Kent Lockmuller and his coaching staff at the Carroll bench. Carroll has made a free throw in this game. They still have it. Rebounded by Scott Wilder. They've missed two, four, six, nine in a row. Dick. Rob Geist, White, Ray Mendenhall. Frank Stiglitz. Rob Geist, White over the defense. Yes. <laughs> Thirty-one twenty-four. Woodland. Steve Merriman. Todd Dunn. Steve Koblenz. He drives in the lane and is fouled by Wilder. We have number four on Scott Wilder. This time, Scott Wilder tried to reach it and uh, bat up the ball. Right there is the contact and the foul. By Scott Wilder, his fourth, and that could be uh, troublesome here for the Woodland Warriors. Steve Weber has replaced uh, Scott Wilder, so it's 31 to 24. Carroll's ball, Koblenz on the fake, goes up, banks it up, misses the shot. The rebound is taken by uh, Steve Weber, and he's fouled by Steve Koblenz. That's Steve's first. Koblenz knew he committed the foul. He takes the shot, goes for the rebound, and bang. Right into Steve Weber, and Koblenz uh, raised his hand right away. He said, oh, that's a good Steve call, Weber official. Here's a 74% free throw on the line. Steve Weber has not scored in this game this afternoon. Here's his back. Now the bonus, 32 to 24. His ninth tournament point, which he, he misses the free throw. Rebound off the board to Kevin Shank. Kevin on a drive is going to slow down. For a minute, I thought he might break and try a foot race to the basket, but he thought better. But I think the bench told him what to do. Koblenz back outside. 6.20 jump shot. Missed by Malcolm. Rebound in the air by Shank. He overshot it. Rebound is to Woodland. They have a fast break as Mendenhall slows it down. Nice White misses the shot. Rebound. Picked up. Shot and scored by Kevin Weber. Ten point lead. The biggest lead of the game for Woodland is 34 to 24. It comes at 550 of the final stanza. Remember Louisville and Kansas following this game, and then North Carolina and Georgia Tech. Koblenz, nice fake. He goes up, misses the shot. Guy White on the rebound. He plays both ends of the court. A 10-point lead 
to the team with the basketball, the Woodland Warriors. They're looking for their seventh ACAC championship. Intercepted by Todd Dunn. Five minutes. be taken by Carroll. It's 4.53 to play in the game, and it's 34 to 24. Woodland, more in a moment. Back at the Memorial Coliseum in Fort Wayne, our live coverage of the 63rd Annual ACAC High School Boys Basketball Championship continues. Our television coverage goes all the way back to 1954. And this believe it or not, was the very first tournament the WKJG Channel 33 telecast in this era. We signed on November 21st, 1953. First tournament was January of 1954, and it was the Allen County Basketball Tournament. Carroll with the basketball, and now trailing by 10. High post play. They may go high post, low post, and see if they can't break somebody loose. There it is again. Turn around, Chapa Merriman. He got it. Dave Merriman scores. So it's 34 to 26. Rob Geisbein cruising down the left side. Very smooth lad. He does everything with grace. Mendenhall. He scores. He's fouled. Todd Dunn picks up foul number four. And Ray Mendenhall scores. The basket has a possible three-pointer. It is 36-26. Todd Dunn trying to stop this drive by Mendenhall, tried to stop the shot, and he hits uh, Mendenhall right across that left shoulder. That's foul number four on uh, Dunn. Mendenhall now has a chance for a three point four. 57% free thrower. 37 to 26, the biggest lead. 11 points. Steve Malcolm for Carroll. Kevin Shank that's cutting him off. Merriman. Koblenz has his shooting shot and scores. 37 to 28, four minutes to go. Guys right off the pivot, misses the shot. Rebounded by Todd Dunn. out of bounds. Steve Weber batted into the crowd over there. Todd Dunn. Copeland. Another long shot. Will he get it? Yes. Copeland is beginning to find the range outside. 37 to 30. We may have a Woodland timeout here in a moment. It is to Geiswhite, and foul is charged to Steve Malcolm. We have five fouls on him, and that is confirmed. Steve Malcolm trying to break up the play. He went up in the air with Geiswhite and fouled him, so he fouls out of the game. Malcolm uh, did not score a point in this contest today. Rob Geiswhite will be on the foul line, and if we can uh, get a picture up, we'll get his ceremonial. There he is. There's Rob going through his ceremonial as he wipes his shoes, then blows his hands. Here he is on the foul line. He's two from two there this afternoon. And he scores. Now the bonus. There he is. Does it all. Every time he shoots a free throw, the same ceremonial. With the same result. <laughs> No miss. 14 points for Rob, and it's 39 to 30. Woodland by nine at three minutes and 15 seconds. Publins. Done, done down the line. Hooks it with the left hand. It's good. Uh, 39-32. Woodland working through a press. And there's a collision. 
The foul will be charged to 24, Rod Myers. I think Stiglitz is banged up against the press table, but he's all right. Stiglitz will be on the foul stripe. He's not been there today. He has four points. 69% at the foul lane for the season. Averages 10 points a game. And score. by Todd Dunn. 248-247, Steve Koblenz. Rod Myers, Rod goes down the lane, gets in a lot of traffic, shoots it, misses it. Rebound inside, shot and missed, and a foul has been charged as Kevin Shank was fouled by Greg Stiglitz. Here's the drive by Meyer, his shot won't go. Shank gets the rebound, goes up for the shot, and he's fouled by Stiglitz. And Scott Wilder re-enters for Woodland. Leaving will be Kevin Weber. In a close game, and uh, this is reasonably close at this moment, uh, it's good to be able to score without the clock running when you're behind. And right now, Kevin has two, and he's a 58% free throw shooter. He scores. Great competitor, this lad. He came off the bench on Thursday night when Carroll really needed a lift, and he gave it to him. But he didn't feel too well, but was able to play the rest of the ball game. He did not start. He's going to play the first six minutes. He gets two free throws here, and it is 40 to 34. Two minutes, 35 seconds. Ray Mendenhall for the Woodland Warriors. Rob Geis White, they double team him. Passes to Mendon Hall. Scott Wilder got away and he scored. 11 points for Scott, it's 42 to 34. Koblenz misses. Wilder rebound. 205, 204 to go, and it's 42 to 34. Woodland. Ray Mendenhall, back to Rob Geistwhite. Carroll, of course, playing man-to-man. -man. Otherwise, Woodland would just stay out there and pull the ball, and there'd be no action. They have the lead. But, of course, the new rules on that make it a little more difficult. 1.38 to go. Ball is deflected by Koblenz. Right back to Koblenz. Koblenz goes in, and he misses the shot. Rebound is recovered by Rod Myers, and a foul has been charged. That stops the clock. It'll be against Woodland with 1.29 to go. It's 42 commits the foul here. Here goes the shot. That doesn't go. Too hard off the backboard. Stiglitz pushing, trying to get the rebound. Well, the clock stops, and Carroll has a chance to pick up a couple of points here. Eight-point lead for Woodland. Rob misses, rebound to the corner, and it's out of bounds to Woodland. 42-34, the score remains. Carroll has made only two free throws in this game. They were both by Kevin Shank a few moments ago. Kevin Weber. Very quick foul here. And they're going to call the foul on uh, either Shank or either uh, who the foul was on. He's either Koblenz or was Merriman. Merriman. Merriman, okay, they were both there. So give the foul to Merriman. And here is Ray Mendenhall at the foul line. He leads by eight. Misses from Kevin Shank. Bounding down the left side. Coming hard, driving hard. Going baseline. Feeds it back out to Koblenz. Here's his long shot. He misses this one. Rebound tipped into the air. Wilder down for it all alone is Stiglitz. He scores. So that may ice it here with a minute and eight to go. 44 to 34. Yeah. 
Koblenz. Carroll has come on in the latter stages of this uh, basketball season. Woodland is unbeaten, 13 in a row, going for 14. There's Shank missing. Rebound is to Steve Weber. Foul to Todd Dunn. And now Carroll is going to empty the bench. Todd Stahlhut going in. Number 40 is uh, Jamie Gonzagowski ready to go in, and returning will be Todd Schinbeckler. Todd Dunn picked up his fifth foul on this particular play, reaching over the bank of Mr. Weber, and Dunn fouls out of the ball game. Going to the free throw line now for the Woodland Warriors will be Kevin Weber, six foot five senior. Now it's Steve Weber. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> All I saw was the two. I didn't see the three or the two two. I saw the just the last number two. They sure do look alike. They certainly do. You you may be right. They may have changed shirts at halftime. <laughs> so I could be right. He scores. Now the vote. So it is 45 to 34. I wonder if they're both left-handed. I've never noticed yes, that. Yes, they are. Oh. I thought that might give me a the other night, but no, they do the same. And they're both good free throws. <laughs> 46 to 34. This is Todd Stahlhut. Steve Koblenz. The Stahlhut with 35 seconds. Koblenz from the corner. Missed it. Rebound bat in the air. Stiglitz gets it. Here is Rob Geistwright coming down, and he lost the dribble momentarily, but it's okay, and it's play by Scott Wilder. Wilder scores 48 34 17 seconds. Brad Willeen. It is Stallett. Not good. Stiglitz rebounds. There's Bennett Hall down court and going in scoring is Steve Weber and breaking it open 50. It is all over and Woodland has won the championship 50 to 34 over Carroll that gave uh, Woodland a battle for a while in this game, but could not uh, stem the talent of this fine Woodland basketball team that won its 14th consecutive game of this season. The final score, 50 to 34. Rob Geiswhite leading Woodland again with a total of 14 points. We'll be back with the ceremony and the presentation of the Channel 33 Sports Most Valuable Player Award following these messages. Woodland has just won its seventh overall ACAC basketball championship. May I present to you now the principal of the whole school from Heritage High School, Principal Jim Drews. Jim? Thanks again, Mr. Gates. A wonderful championship tournament coming to a close here. The Woodland Warriors had a lot of pressure all year as they represent our conference well and they've stuck right to that format this year as they've won the 1986 championship. Would the captains please come forward this time. Kind of face the camera right around this way. Again, our congratulations as you've represented the ACAC and at its time, I'll ask attorney manager, Mr. Larry Robbins, to present the trophy and the game ball to the Woodland Warriors. Congratulations. Thank you. Again, I would like to bring on Principal Rohrbacher from Woodland to make the presentation of the runner-up ball. Could I have the captains or seniors from Carroll, please? <laughs> Fellows, on behalf of the ACAC tourney, I'd like to present you with the runner-up game ball. Job well done, fellas. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Okay. At this time, at this time, I would again like to introduce Officer Bob Bauer, Officer Don Crumpacker and Sheriff Dan Fiegel from the Allen County Sheriff's Department for the Sportsmanship Award. Thank you, Bob. Again, it's my pleasure 
to have everybody here and this representing the Sheriff's Department for this award. And we'd like representatives from Cherubusco High School to come down and receive this award. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, again, our annual ceremonial to present the most valuable player award in the boys' ACAC championship. This young man is one of the few thousand-point career scorers in this part of the state of Indiana. He was outstanding again this week, scoring a total of 76 points in three basketball games here. A remarkable young man who plays both ends of the basketball court and has run his total for the season to more than 365 points. The winner for 1986, Rob Geistweit. Congratulations, Rob. Thanks. You had a lot of honors, but you deserve them all. You play with great talent and great speed and grace, and you do everything so well in the basketball court. I congratulate you. Thanks a lot. I've had a lot of help this year, though. My team, where I think um, we got a lot of talent this year, and we play well together, and i just like to praise the Lord for how he's blessed this team and gotten us this far. Thank you. Congratulations. And we'll be back talking to Gay Martin, the coach of the winning Woodland Warriors, following these messages. <laughs> 